he can turn type immunity into a 50 times weakness. He's a certified pseudo legendary slayer. And he's yellow. Let's brush off the books and break down why exactly Ash's Pikachu is insanely broken. Hey Charles, it's everyone. How are you today? Pikachu has been the worrying core of Ash's team since day one, and while others have come and gone, rest in peace Greninja, a Ketchum team without Pikachu is not a Ketchum team at all. Indeed, looking beyond the hype of the seasonal aces, it is Pikachu who has driven Ash to many of his greatest victories and held the team together in many of their darkest hours. So today's plan is to better understand why exactly Yellow Mickey is such a powerhouse by breaking down its stunning achievements and what is under the hood in terms of stat buffs, secret moves, and more. And as always, it's going to be a good time, so kindly subscribe to join the family, zap that like button for the YouTube algorithm, and let's bust out the juicy nuggets. Good golly, Miss Molly, today we are sponsored by not just one, but two awesome games, and they are both totally different, so if you're not a fan of one, then you will probably enjoy the other. Firstly, if you're into frenetic and fun online and local multiplayer arena shooters, then you should check out Mech Arena, a 5 on 5 mobile shooter featuring tons of unique and highly customizable mechs. What I love about Mech Arena is how you can trick out your mech to suit your playstyle, which for me means using a defensive mech like the Panther and sniping people from the shadows. But the potential stat buffs and weapon variants go so, so deep that I'll just leave it to you to research how you'd like to gear up your mech. So Mech Arena is a dandy, but if you are more of a fantasy fan, then there is always the classic Raid Shadow Legends, a hugely popular dark fantasy RPG that is loaded to the brim with tough dungeons, larger than life clan bosses, and over 700 heroes to collect and take into battle in single player or PvP showdowns. Interestingly, Raid's story and lore text were actually written by Paul C. R. Monk, who wrote a historical fiction series that I actually love. And as you'd expect, his great work on Raid's rich narrative makes it worth a look. This is a big month for both games because one, Mech Arena is getting its Season 9 Battle Pass, and it is also rolling out a one-year anniversary campaign loaded with special events and prizes including a nifty sniper weapon as well as the new pilot, Archangel. And two, at long last, Raid will be upgrading the fan favorite champion, Death Knight, into a legendary champion. Big news for two big games, both of which are free to play, so be sure to download the game of your preference via my personal links below or by scanning the on-screen QR code. P.S. For a meaty boost in raid. Use my link to grab a free starter pack valued at nearly $30, a free champion, Tyrol, plus this in-game loot. And if you're in the mech arena camp, download the game via my link to snag a firelight skin, prodigy crate, and plasma cannon 4. Lastly, you should add me in-game at Charu Charu to join my raid clan or look up my player ID for a match or two in mech arena. And with that said, thank you again to today's sponsors and let's get back to today's chat. Spending its early days as a Pichu under the watchful eyes of Mama Kangaskhan, it is unclear exactly how Pikachu came under Professor Oak's ownership, probably with a four-seam fastball straight to the face. But what is crystal clear is that Pikachu went on to reluctantly join Ash's team as crew member numero uno. On the day, our pilot town hero set out to become a Pokemon master, and the rest is history. From the very first episode of the anime, there were indicators that Pikachu was unusually powerful. And sure enough, he soon attracted the attention of Team Rocket and its big boss Giovanni. While Team Rocket may not have the best judgment, they were right on the money tree with this one. And over the course of Ash Ketchum's travels, Pikachu has emerged as a powerhouse who punches well above his weight, racks up one incredible win after another, and causes enough property damage to put Ashy Boy in the slammer until his 11th birthday. But let's just put some of these achievements up front and let them do the talking. Beating Drake's Dragonite to win the Orange League, defeating Brandon's Regice to conquer the Battle Frontier, taking Game Shark face Tobias's Latios to a tie in the Lily of the Valley Conference, dropping two pseudo legendaries, and biting into Alan's Mega Charizard X in the Kalos League Finals, defeating Tapu Koko in the show stopping finale of the Pokemon Sun and Moon anime, crushing Steven Stone's ace Mega Metagross to push Ash through to the semifinals of the Masters 8 tournament while snagging the Metagross hat trick in the process, etc., etc. This is just a short list of Pikachu's achievements in the anime with practically countless gym victories, multiple match tipping 2-3 to three knockout streaks during league battles, and many, many other heroic exploits to its name. Pikachu's significance is often overlooked in the shadow of the fandom's big one for the show's seasonal aces, but it was Pikachu, not Greninja, who carried Ash's team against Alan in the Kalos League Finals. It was Pikachu, not Charizard, who dropped the mountain. And it was Pikachu, not the Brockerock, who looked real cute eating ketchup. 
Without a doubt, Pikachu is a beast. But the question is, how exactly does a mere Pikachu pull off a track record this star-studded? Charles, it's the plot. It's the plot armor. Well, no shuckles, Shucklock. It's an anime. And while I do sympathize with this point of view, because... Hot damn. Let's break down what makes Ash's Pikachu so broken in terms of in-universe lore and logic. Firstly, and we will get into how this is established in the video games later on, but Ash's Pikachu is just built different, and that does account for a percentage of its incredible performance on the pitch. When Professor Oak gave Pikachu to Ash, he states that there is a problem with Pikachu. And while this could have been a reference to Pikachu having an unusual amount of power packed into its electric type attacks, Professor Oak is probably referring to Pikachu's sparky, indomitable personality, and it is precisely that disposition that has led to not just Ash getting electrocuted numerous times over the years, but also to Pikachu pushing himself well past the point where most Pokemon would fall in battle, making its innate grit, its unconquerable spirit, one of the keys to its success. Secondly, there is the idea that Pikachu's development was influenced by a number of early era stat buffs, beginning with the theory that the lightning bolt that strikes Pikachu in episode 1 blew off the power cap, or at the very least expanded its capacity for channeling electricity. Pikachu's getting struck by lightning isn't a particularly unusual occurrence, but whether or not the lightning bolt impacted Pikachu's power power level or not, in the subsequent episode the Team Rocket trio recognizes Pikachu's unusual strength and develops a peculiar fixation on capturing it that would both delight and torment fans for years to come. It's also worth noting that in the same episode, Ash's recovering Pikachu gets turbocharged by both a pack of Pikachu and Ash channeling energy into his friend via Misty's desecrated bicycle, enabling it to unleash a blast of electricity so violent that it blows up the Viridian City Pokemon Center. It reminded me of how fighters in Dragon Ball Z would be pushed to the brink of death and then gulp down a juicy nugget, I mean a senzu bean, and come back stronger than ever. And while it is entirely possible that these buffs were temporary, we are beginning to see a pattern of Pikachu being pushed to its limits such that it must break through those limits and ascend to SSP 1, 2, 3, and beyond. And perhaps the most famous example of this comes in the fifth episode of the original series, wherein Ash's team gets ragdolled in their Pewter City gym battle and are only able to overcome Brock the Rock by way of special training courtesy of Brock's estranged father Flint, in which Big Pappy Flint links Pikachu up to an old hydroelectric plant retrofitted with good old pallet power, pushing Pikachu through a painful experience that further expands its charge capacity. Knocking out an entire flock of Spearows in a single strike is one thing, but knocking out an electricity immune Pokemon with Thundershock, biting into another, and then bringing it to its knees with a little help from the sprinklers, and later going on to flat out obliterate another powerful ground rock type Pokemon in a big battle battle down the line is another thing altogether. And while the writers did walk back this groundbreaking development in later series, it's quite likely that these early era power-ups did elevate Pikachu's growth potential. But of course, beyond the theorized stat buffs, there are also specific power player qualities that only came about through Pikachu's relationship with Ash. Firstly, Ash Ketchum is known for his unconventional thinking and out-of-the-box plays that turn rocks into water and W's into L's, and nowhere has this been more evident than in his partnership with Pikachu. Whether it be having Pikachu bounce out of an electroweb for the KO with a supercharged iron tail, turn opponents' attacks into stepping stones to gain the game-ending high ground, or combine iron tail with quick attack to unleash an omnidirectional shockwave that not only shields him from damage, but craters his opponent at the same time. Even without Pikachu's built different genetics and benefits derived Derived from a fairly unique training regiment, the opponent would not be up against a mere Pikachu. They'd be up against the Ash and Pikachu duo, who have the bravery and the brains to snatch unbelievable victories out of the cheeks of defeat time and time again. And having known each other since day one of Ash's adventure, their close connection is every bit as strong as the aura bonds that Ash has developed with other key Pokemon, if not more so, enabling them to whip out their outrageous off-the-cuff dynamite plays at a moment's notice. But beyond the buddy bond and the improv moves that turn Pikachu's four moves movesets into virtually limitless arrays of situation-specific power plays, it certainly doesn't hurt that Pikachu has topped off the broken cake with two major battle gimmicks. Beginning with the Gigantamax phenomenon, Pikachu that can actually Gigantamax are a rarity, further demonstrating that Madre Pikachu and Padre Pikachu gifted their boy with the good stuff. But more impressive and more versatile is Pikachu's stable of Z-Move Zingers. Since gearing up with Z-Crystal and Z-Ring Ensemble in Alola, we have seen Ash and Pikachu unleash three Z-Moves. 
moves, Gigavolt Havoc, Breakneck Blitz, and of course, 10 million volt Thunderbolt, which the two have used to topple Tapu Koko to put Volkner's Electivire down for the count in the World Coronation Series Hyperclass and to steal a win from the champion of Hoenn's Mega Metagross. 10 million volt Thunderbolt has become Ash and Pikachu's signature trump card, and wherever the use of major gimmicks are permitted, you can be sure that we will see them use it to turn the tides of seemingly unwinnable battles. So at the end of the day, G-Max capability and Z-Moves may just be icing on the cake, but the icing sure is sweet. If there is one thing I've observed over the years, it is that old school video game players are continually perplexed by the events of the anime. Sometimes as defensible advocates of common sense, and sometimes as mulish old men shouting at the kids on their lawn. But either way, in the case of Ash's Pikachu, I think that Pokemon Let's Go has done a good job addressing the skepticism regarding this particular Pikachu's insane power level by finally grounding everything in solid game logic. Essentially, a normal Pikachu caught in the wild has a base stat total of just 320, whereas the game's partner Pikachu, clearly a reference to Ash's Pikachu, has a base stat total of 430 and perfect IVs. Furthermore, just as Ash's Pikachu often endures attacks that should put it out for the count and lands show-stopping blows that seemingly come out of nowhere, Pokemon with whom a trainer shares a strong friendship in Let's Go can also eat up hits that should normally knock them out, shake off status conditions, land critical hits twice as often, enjoy a 10% stat boost, etc etc. In a sense, I see this as the game's developers attempting to rationalize the power of Ash's Pikachu and some of the more general X factors of the anime, just as they did with the Battle Bond Greninja that was introduced in the Pokemon Sun and Moon demo. And I like that. Any hoot hoots, taking everything in today's discussion together, it's easy to see how Ash's Pikachu has become so insanely broken over the years, and it essentially comes down to a combination of darn good genetics, an indomitable spirit, early era power buffs, the Ash Pikachu buddy bond, plot panoply, and a robust moveset complete with hard hitting improv techniques and battle mechanic mania. But then again, it was probably just Red's Pikachu to begin with.